Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be redesigning this vintage tour t-shirt that I made for a client. The brand sent me through a lot of ACDC examples for reference so they were really looking for that old school vibe. So here is the mood board I put together on Pinterest for the project. A lot of really solid examples here of vintage t-shirts so great inspiration and a great way to start any project in the right direction. Thank you everyone for your support so far it's been amazing. If you do find the video useful then please subscribe and check out some of my other videos. Let's get started. So this is the finished design that I made for a client and we're going to basically just rebuild this because I didn't screen record myself doing it the first time. This does obviously mean that it will come out a little bit different than this one however you'll get the opportunity to see all the techniques I use to build this. So first things first let's head up to file and make a new canvas. I'm going to be using the same document setup I always use which is 15 by 18 inches at 300 dpi. Once that's loaded we can bring in the skulls we're going to be using. So these are actually 3D objects from Envato Elements so I was able to get these at the right angle I wanted. You could easily use skull images however this saves me the time of cutting the skulls out and also searching around for two skulls that are going to work together and are at the perfect angle that I wanted so it does kill two birds with one stone. So now I'm probably going to spend about half hour trying to find the perfect position and I'll be back in a minute when we do something interesting again. Okay, so let's now head up to filter and filter gallery and we're going to start applying some effects to the skulls to make them look a little bit more grungy, a little bit more old school and a little bit more like a vintage skull that you might see on a vintage tour t-shirt. So we're using torn edges and grain here which are a perfect combo to add that sort of grungy effect to an image and as you can see I'm just basically going to play around with the sliders until I find a good balance of everything. There's no settings I can really suggest using because it's different with every image so just play around with whatever image you're using and see what the result is. Just remember to put torn edges on top of the grain effect otherwise it won't work. So now I'm going to create a layer mask on skull 2 and I'm going to grab a soft round brush and I'm going to basically create a shadow in between the two skulls. So the reason I'm doing this with a layer mask and this will become clearer later on when we remove some of the other black from the skulls like the nose and the eyes that when this is printed we want some of the t-shirt to show through in the design rather than it printing jet black onto the t-shirt so if we use a layer mask now it will just save us the trouble of trying to remove the black later on. Like I said though this will become clearer later on. So the next step is to add a gradient map to the skulls which is going to give them their colour. Gradient maps are a very useful way to add colour back to an image after using effects like torn edges and grain which will automatically turn the image black and white. So I'm going for like an off white beigey colour and also keeping the black in there. I'm kind of exaggerating a normal skull colour I guess just so it pops a little more. And then I'm just going to duplicate the gradient map we've just made and place it over the other skull. Don't forget to clip the gradient layer to the skull by clicking in between the two layers and holding alt. This way the gradient map only affects the skull and not the entire canvas. Let's package the skulls into their own little group and now we can start adding the text. The font we're using at the top is called Squealer and that's the sort of um, official ACDC, well it's not official but it's the font that the ACDC logo is based on. So either someone made the font after the logo or the logo used this font, I'm not sure which way around it was however. I've seen it used on a lot of t-shirts that aren't necessarily anything to do with ACDC and it just has a really cool heavy metal vibe. I'll put a link in the description so you can download Squealer if you want to, it's a free commercial font. The other font I'm using at the bottom is called Birch and that's an Adobe font so it should already be there on your Photoshop depending on what version you have. So you may have noticed that if you've got your Photoshop rulers set up at the side you can kind of just drag out some guidelines whenever you want and that's a really easy way to just check if things are lined up correctly because sometimes Photoshop doesn't give you the sort of automatic guides when you're trying to line things up and sometimes it does but it's just always handy to drag them out and just double check anyway. So the next thing we're going to do is add a gradient overlay to the text. I'm just going to roughly eyeball it but I'm just going to apply what I did last time which was something like a red or an orange fading into a yellow and we're also going to duplicate this gradient map uh, sorry this gradient overlay and apply it to the bottom text as well So 
So now we're going to put together the text style that I used on the word beef and this is a little bit more complex but we're just going to go through it slowly. So the first part and this bit is optional is we're going to add a pattern overlay and we're going to apply like a grain or a grit to it. Make sure the blend mode is hard light and most people won't have these already on their Photoshop so you'll need to find some online. Uh, I found these from just a random website so just type in uh, Photoshop patterns on Google and you'll be able to find some that you'll download and they will install very similar to a brush and then you can apply them to text like this. The next thing to add is a gradient overlay and we're using the blend mode linear burn and we're using the gradient that has black and it fades to transparent. This should be just a normal preset on everyone's Photoshop. So here I just realized that this gradient wasn't already on my Photoshop for some reason. I must have accidentally got rid of it. You can see the white to transparent one is there. So I end up saving this one again. The rest of the settings you can play around with. The next thing to add is an inner shadow. The blend mode is linear burn again and the rest of it I was literally just messing around until I kind of got this effect. When I made this originally I had the strokes on first and then the uh, inner shadow is kind of easier to build with the strokes on already. But today we're kind of just going through it and I'm showing you how I built it. So we're kind of working backwards really. If you want to copy these settings though it will work with most text. So lastly we're going to add two strokes. One's going to be a thick white one and another is going to be a black one which is very thin on the inside and that kind of gives it almost a tiny little bit of a 3D effect on the stroke there you can see it come in. I really should have gone through the list in the other way so it makes more sense especially the inner shadow because now you can see it actually makes sense but I'm just showing you how it's put together basically and you can copy these settings and apply it to whatever you want. And lastly we just need to change the colour of the text and that is the finished beef text all done. So now we can go back to the skulls and we're going to make duplicates of each one and then we're going to hide the skulls folder that we made earlier so we've got the originals in case we need to go back to them and we're going to remove the black from the skulls so they're transparent so like we talked about earlier with the dark parts of the shirt showing through in the design we're basically going to make that happen now and when I made that shadow that's going to make a lot more sense. So you can see now when I hide the background layer that that shadow we made is transparent so that was being made up by what will be the shirt and we need to get rid of the black that's in the eyes and the rest of the blacks in the skull. To do that, we're gonna go into blending options and use the blend if slider like you see me doing now. And it looks really weird when you haven't got a background, but the idea is that these dark portions will be made up by the actual shirt. So the printer won't have to print black. So if you're printing on a faded shirt, you won't have a faded shirt, which is like a light gray and then jet black printed on it because that would just look, well, it looks shit. <laughs> So you can see now when we add the background back in that it all looks normal. So this is basically just for the printers. One thing though that making it transparent will do is show through things that are underneath. So I can see that's that um, second skull just underneath this first one. So I'm just removing that with a layer mask. And this technique is mainly for director garment prints. So now we're going to add the fire to the skulls and I want to show you an alternative way to do it if you don't have the resources that I'm going to use in this video. So here I'm just on Google Images and I'm finding a picture of fire with a black background. Um, I think I find, yeah, I'll find one on Pexels, which, so this will be really good quality. So I'm just gonna grab this for the example and I'm gonna bring it into Photoshop. And what, you, what we're gonna do is, if we change the blend mode to screen, what you'll see is that will take out all of the black from the fire. And you can then layer this up with other pictures of fire and build the same effects that I'm gonna show you. But I'm gonna use fire overlays, which I got from Invato Elements which are already transparent. So that's why I'm showing you this because you can achieve the same sort of thing. So here are the fire overlays that I'm gonna use and I'm gonna use different, loads of different ones to kind of just build up some thick fire in and around the skulls. This bit I can guarantee will probably not look nothing like my original design because I spent ages trying to get the fire to sit nicely with the skulls, but you'll get the idea and you can see how I did it and then you can spend more time with your own design. So the point is just to show you. So what you may have noticed if you were paying attention haha, is that the fire is actually underneath the skulls and because the skulls are transparent it's actually showing through it. So that's something we need to fix. So I'm going to bring down the opacity and I'm going to use a layer mask and I'm going to just remove the fire that is sitting over part of the skull where it wouldn't be able to show through.
and exactly the same thing here i'm bringing in some more fire to fill in some of the gaps that i can see in like the eyes and the noses of the skulls and basically the same thing again layer mask and then remove it from any part of the skull where fire would not be able to show through the transparency thing may seem like such a pain in the ass right now but i promise you it will lead to a better print overall The final step of this design is to add texture to it. So we're going to group everything together and name it what you want. And then we're going to apply a layer mask to the group. And then we're going to put a texture inside the layer mask itself. So hold alt and click on the thumbnail of the layer mask and that will bring you inside. And then all we're going to do is copy any sort of texture you want to add to the design into the layer mask. This texture is from Fulham Hagen. It's on his website for sale and they are specific for merch design. You probably know him from YouTube anyway, but he sells really, really good textures for t-shirts. They're perfect for this size canvas as well. And as you can see, the reason why we put it in a layer mask is so it cuts through the entire design. So all that black you can see on the skulls and everything, that is actually the t-shirt coming through. When I applied the texture, I just noticed some of the fire that I could still see through the skulls. So I'm just gonna clean that up using the layer masks, but that is the finished design guys. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I know it's a little bit different from what I normally do as I normally kind of go step by step quite clearly and this time we are remaking something. I've been doing this channel for about four months now and it's been going so well but I'm still experimenting with how I like to teach these designs and how I like to edit my videos and stuff so bear with me. I'm going to try a lot of different things. I'm going to see what works and then maybe we'll stick with that and maybe we'll just change it up every time. Who knows? As usual guys, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Balancing the YouTube videos with the client work and also the day job and my family is difficult and I appreciate everything. So thank you so much. If you enjoyed the tutorial, please remember to subscribe and like the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.